Welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. Today I have um, winners for the 500 subscriber giveaway. So I'd like to go ahead and announce those. I used the random number generator to uh, choose two winners. One for this uh, hand dyed, hand spun by me <laughs> yarn that um, I made. So this is some merino. It was, um, like I said, dyed by me and <laughs> it just says purple hand spun. Um, it's over four ounces, 252 yards. I have to double check that and um, when I send this off to the winner, I think I'll add some more information and try to get like an average um, wraps per inch and things like that. So you guys have a little, well, the winner has more information about this yarn. Um, <clears throat> so, who won this yarn? Um, number six, which is Angelic Embers. So Angelic Embers, you are the winner of this yarn. If you could please uh, direct message me on Ravelry, um, send me your information so that I can get this yarn out to you. Um, yeah, congratulations. So the second winner is uh, the winner of the bat, and I will show it to you. Again, this is um, this is a blend of of this hedgehog fibers merino nylon top um, that I bought and drum carded with some mohair. So there are some mohair locks that I dyed. Um, and then carded in with the, I'll take it out, and then carded with the, with the hedgehog fibers fiber. So I, I drum carded, um, one big bat and then split it in half. So the first half is actually in my crochet great granny square blanket. And this is the second half, which is going to go to, um, post number eight, which is, How's Farm. Um, so, uh, number, post number six, Angelic Embers, and post number eight, How's, oh, why did I say farm? How's Fam. I'll put those on the screen. Um, you won the bat. So please get in touch with me through Ravelry. Direct message me your information so that I can send these out to you. And again, congratulations. Um, and a giant thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Um, I don't like to do the whole like new subscribers, old subscribers spiel every time, but I do appreciate all of you. And um, thank you for being here and for joining me and for, um, I guess, enjoying watching my crafty life. Um, <laughs> so thank you. My notebook. <laughs> uh, all my show notes are on here. I'm not going to show you. <laughs> thank you guys so much. And um, I think it's so cool that I've hit 500. It's a pretty big um, milestone. I don't care too much about the numbers. Actually, I think the higher the number gets, it kind of scares me a little bit. But um, uh, yeah, anyways, thank you guys for uh, for subscribing and for joining in, and um, yeah, it's it, this has been fun. So, <laughs> I have some cool stuff to talk about today. Um, I got a package in the mail, so in January, um, uh, my husband and I did some pottery painting, and uh, it was a, uh, a place in Chester, Vermont, um, so yeah, it was about a month ago that we did that and we finally got our pottery back in the mail. We could have drove down and picked it up, but it is a bit of a drive. So we decided to have it shipped to us. Um, <clears throat> so 
I'll show you my husband's first. So my husband made this mug. It has um, little fish on it. And yeah, he went with a blue and green theme. This little guy has bubbles. The bubbles were my idea. <laughs> and um, yep, yeah, that's, that's his mug. So this is the one that he painted. Uh, there is a slight issue. So his mug came chipped. Um, it's the gloss on the outside that's chipped. It's not the actual uh, pottery that's chipped. It's just the the paint that he put on there that's chipped, the glaze. Um, and I, I don't know if we can fix that. I'd have to reach out to the... Um, to the, the people who run the studio, um, whether or not we can fix that. But we had a bit of an issue with them um, and their customer service. You know, I was wondering like why it was taking so long to get the pottery. And I contacted them and I was told that I would be called back and giving a tra uh, given a tracking number. That never happened. Um, they never called me back, which was I don't know, bad customer service. Um, but I don't know. Um, I, so I don't know how much this is worth trying to get fixed. I don't want to harp on it. Um, so sadly, but he still loves it and it's really not a big deal. It doesn't, it doesn't affect the, the mug. He can still use it and he loves it. So, so I also painted a mug. So I don't know what I should show you first. I think I'm going to show you this first. So I painted a light switch and, um, yeah, I was thinking that I could put this either that light switch right there would be really cute, especially if I keep podcasting up here or down here. Rather, I used to pod, uh, film record like sewing videos upstairs um, at the top of the landing. My cat is being a pain. You know, you're not supposed to be on that. <laughs> I used to film upstairs. There's more light right here, um, which is usually why I film here. Um, so I thought about putting this light switch right there, <laughs> but also there's a switch at the top of the stairs, which if I decided to, um, film up there again, which I've thought about like painting and making like a cute podcasting area, I'd have to get lights though. And that's why I haven't done it. Or, I mean, I should, if I did it, I should get lights. Um, so you can see I have natural light here that's coming in and out. It's partially cloudy today. It's very beautiful. It's like 40 degrees. Um, I don't know exactly what the temperature is, but the snow is melting and it feels warm. The sun is uh, staying out longer. Um, it, I'm starting to get a little bit of spring fever. I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> I'm starting to be like ready for warm weather and to not have to wear all the things just to go outside. Uh, <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, I made this light switch. It has. Um, this speckled glaze. So the glaze itself has um, sort of like primary colored speckles. Um, and that was white. Uh, and then I put um, these purple dots over it. But what I actually accidentally did was used my paintbrush for my mug, which had this mint color on it. So when I painted, um, you, I painted a few layers. So the first layer was just the the speckled white glaze and then oh, that's the back you can kind of see on the side there's just like a white speckled like there yeah so I accidentally used my mint um, brush <laughs> and so I got this uh, lighter mint color with the purple which I actually think was cool it was like a happy accident so I love mint and purple as you're about to see um, I just, I don't know, something about mint and purple that I find appealing. So yeah, a light switch that I have to decide where to put. Either there or up there. And then maybe eventually I'll make another light switch and then have, um, I don't know. <laughs> this this makes me want to like go paint <laughs> a ton of light switches and replace all of the light switches. But I'm also afraid of breaking it too, so we'll see. So, my mug. <laughs> this is my mug that I painted. It has this mandala on it and it's purple on the inside and um, mint on the outside. And it has these little spots. I think that's they sat it on top of something when they fired it. 
Um, fun fact, my aunt is a really awesome potter. Uh, she lives in the mountains of North Carolina. Um, she's not doing any pottery right now. Um, I'll, I'll keep the reasons to myself, but she, uh, she's an amazing potter. There's a bunch of stuff that she's made, like real pottery. This is painting pottery. This is not the same. My aunt made, um, real awesome pottery that she threw on her, uh, wheel. It's, I guess you just call it a wheel. Um, and I guess I'll tell you a little story. I was supposed to, um, my husband and I, um, got engaged in the mountains of North Carolina and, um, he proposed to me on the top of this mountain. We hiked up to this beautiful view and, um, that's where he asked me to marry him. Um, but my aunt and I, we were staying with my aunt and uncle and my aunt and I had talked about when we got back, cause we were supposed to go do some, um, sort of sightseeing. Basically I wanted to go see some things that I um, my dad and I used to go camping, uh, at this, on this mountain. There's this, uh, cool place. I just have all these memories from my childhood. Um, so my grandparents actually took us up there. And when we got back, uh, my aunt and I had talked about, like, doing some pottery together. She was going to, like, teach me to start making some pottery. And, um, uh, that, that never happened because, um, my husband uh, asked me to marry him, <laughs> and we ended up staying out later. And um, yeah, we yeah, we hiked up the mountain, and we took a million photos. And I don't know, maybe I'll insert some if I feel like it. We'll see. I I I like to keep some of that stuff to myself. So, okay. Long story short, my aunt my aunt does pottery, but this is beautiful. Um, it has this mandala. Um, they have like stamps and all kinds of different things that you could use to embellish, um, your pottery. Um, and I found this mandala, which I loved and I don't know, the, the mint purple theme just called to me. So, um, I used a stencil and like a dauber brush, uh, to go over it and it was, it's hard to do because it's on, you know, this round surface. Um, it was hard to get a perfect stencil. So I ended up going over it. Um, so initially I just started with this lighter purple color and then with, um, a small brush and then they had these like, um, squeezy tube things with the same colors. So <clears throat> with the brush and then the squeezy tube thing, um, I went around and cleaned up some of the edges. So yeah, I went around the outside of the purple, um, like the flower petals here with um, the darker purple and I made some darker purple dots and I went around this flower at the top here with the darker purple and then tried to clean up some of the areas with the mint. Um, and some of the areas have this like um, two-toned where the colors kind of mingled a little bit and I think it adds some like depth and character to it. I think it's pretty cool. So <laughs> yeah, that's my mug. I love it. I haven't used it yet. I've been waiting to show it off on the podcast. So yeah, it's my mug. Maybe I will um, use it next time. Okay, so that's it for the pottery. Um, so <laughs> I kind of just jumped straight into things today. Uh, just a reminder that if you'd like to find me outside of uh, YouTube, um, I'm highly active on Instagram and Ravelry. I wouldn't even bother looking anywhere else because those are the two places that I'm active. Um, Ravelry uh, is Crafty Garden Sews. Instagram is Craft Crafty Garden Sews. And I have Crafty Garden Podcast, which is specifically for announcing things related to the podcast. That way I'm not blowing up my personal Instagram account with podcast stuff. Um, and I like it that way. I like to keep it separate. So, so yeah, follow me over there if you want. Um, and I thought I would do a little teaser. Um, I am working on editing some videos right now and trying to put together 
a new series and I'm gonna keep it under wraps until I actually like post the first uh, episode or part one I think I'm gonna call them part one part two and so on uh, in a new series that I'm gonna be working on and sharing some things that I know some of my viewers have wanted to see and hear about so so yeah um, hopefully I will be getting that out ASAP <laughs> I'm just working on like trying to edit a whole bunch of shorter videos and put them together in a way that makes some sort of sense. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, just keep an eye out for that. <laughs> okay, so on the knitting, um, so for knitting today, okay, for knitting, I have my socks to talk about and my um, hand-woven bag that I talked about on the last episode. Um, so yeah, still loving my bag, by the way. Absolutely love it. Still haven't closed up that seam. Yeah, it'll happen eventually. Uh, <laughs> so I've made some serious progress on my socks. And last time I talked about them, I was just about to start the heel. So I hadn't uh, had not started the heel yet. So <clears throat> since then, I did the fish lips kiss, the traditional one. I've done the garter stitch version which is fun, but I thought I'd go for the regular uh, stockinette fish lips kiss, which means you have to purl. And um, I find that I'm getting faster at it. Um, I still don't have, I still like check the pattern to make sure I'm doing it correctly, but I'm getting, it's getting like more, I'm starting to memorize it a little bit better, I think. <laughs> I keep the pattern and then just check it and go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm right. That was, that's what I'm supposed to do. But yeah. And I'll tell you a little tip. That pattern has very wordy instructions. So, uh, for myself, I copied and pasted the bits and pieces that I needed and printed that out so that I have like just the bare minimum that I need to do the heel so that I'm not having to like read through a whole bunch of instructions that I don't need. You know, the first time around that's good, but the rest of the time I'm just like checking to see that I'm doing it correctly and yeah. So <clears throat> here's my socks and um, so I made up this little pattern for the front. I've talked about it in the past. It's just some pearls here and then a cable in, down the middle. I think it looks, um, you can see it better in person. You can kind of see it there if I turn it. I feel like you can see it better in person than you can on camera, the cable. And so for the back, I sort of did the opposite of what's going on in the front. I've got the cable in the center and the pearls on the sides. So for the back, I've got two cables here. See them? Two cables. And then in the middle, I've got the pearls. So I haven't added um, notes on how I did this to my Ravelry page, but I do have notes um, for the front. So, I don't know, maybe I'll try to get notes up there for that. But I don't know, maybe maybe not. I'm not the great at, greatest at um, updating that information. So, that's my socks. And hopefully I will finish them um, by the next episode. I'll have them finished. I do the little fold thing that Mando Bug was talking about. I forget where she says she ends it. I think where it hits the toe. I don't know what that was. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I'm probably going to knit them at least as long as uh, to the where this toe is. It may be longer. I still have um, a fair amount of yarn left. So I could uh, inc do some inc increases and make them really tall socks if I wanted to. I don't know. I haven't. I'll decide when I get there. So that's it for my socks. And... Um, I will just briefly mention my shawl that it's it's the same exact shawl as this. This is the Holy Chevron's shawl. This is hand spun. I've talked about it a million times and I wear it all the time. And um, so I've made a teeny tiny bit of progress. It's not worth like talking about too much, but the rows are getting really long. So I'm slowing down on it and um, I've been doing like, this has been like my car knitting project. So I toss this in my purse and um, 
usually work on this uh, when my husband's driving, of course. Um, so yeah, last time I briefly mentioned that I picked up my husband's sweater again. Um, and yeah, I made a fair amount of progress on one of the sleeves, which I feel like it should go much faster than it's going, but it's going pretty fast. I mean, it's, this isn't, um, yeah, this isn't uh, fingering weight, so it's going a lot faster than it would be if it was fingering weight, but um, for some reason I just feel like these should fly, <laughs> take no time at all. Um, so here's the, I had them on for two at a time, so when I stopped, I don't know, somebody's got a neighbor that's snowmobiling, I think. Um, I had these on for two at a time. So um, you can see that right here where this uh, progress keeper is, is where I was at last time when I talked about the, the sleeves. And that's about where I stopped um, when I took them off of two at a time. And I'll show you the body of the sweater real quick because I haven't talked about it in so long. I think I'll probably have some new subscribers that don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, this, oh. <laughs> this uh, look at my cat. He's at, he's looking out the front door. Um, I just dropped a whole bunch of stitches, which is, and this is let lopey, so it's, I don't need to have a panic attack. It's fine. But this, um, this is my husband's sweater. And you can see the color work. This is my first color work project that I've ever started. <laughs> and um, now I'm going to have to carefully set that aside and fix later. So I'll just show you the yarn that I have. Um, it's all Let Lopey. This is my first Let Lopey, my first color work project, and my first um, Icelandic yarn. Icelandic pattern all, all of the all of the firsts so these are my colors this is the body of course you just saw this is my darkest color my lightest color and then my pretty pop is this green which I picked out because this is for my husband and um, my husband has mostly brown eyes but with this hint of green and I love that about him. <laughs> this I, some of you are like gross stop talking <laughs> I love the green in my husband's eyes. Sorry if that's too sappy for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I think green looks really, uh, he looks really handsome in green. So, okay. Now that I have all of this mess. Um, so I thought I'd show you this progress keeper. Oops, sorry. Um, the progress keeper is uh, made by Mando Bug. And I got a little sampler of, oops, some of them are turned around. Let's fix that. Um, I got the, a little sampler from Mando Bug. It came beautifully packaged. She had this um, sticky glitter um, wrapping all of these in bubble wrap so that were perfectly protected. And <clears throat> it was so adorably uh, packaged. And I got all of these cute little uh, stitch markers. And then the heart is the one progress keeper that I got. So I put the heart on my husband's sweater, of course. <laughs> and uh, I got a puppy paw print, or maybe a kitty. And then a purple one. So these kind of remind me of my dogs, Max and Thea. I need one for my kitty. <laughs> I need a black and white one. <laughs> and um, the coffee bean, which I think is so cool. I love this coffee bean. I am a huge fan of coffee. I have usually one very strong cup of coffee in the morning. Um, on a rare occasion, I'll have a second cup, but I usually keep it to one, but I, I drink it strong. And then this little flower, and I love these. Um, Amanda, Bu Amanda Bug, Amanda uh, of Amanda Bug Craft, she has a YouTube channel if you don't already know about her. Um, she is um, going to be opening an Etsy shop soon, uh, hopefully there, I don't think there's a date yet. Um, but yeah, hopefully she will be opening that soon. So you guys can get some stitch markers for yourself. And 
I think I've said all I need to say about the sweater. So I'll go ahead and tell you that I used um, the pumpkin, the pumpkin that she sent, she made for me. She knows I love pumpkins. Uh, I got married in October and I had lots of pumpkins at our wedding. We had pumpkins lining the aisle of our, um, of the ceremony. We got married outside in front of the lake. It was very beautiful. Um, so I made this yarn. I've showed this before, but you're like, I haven't seen that. That's because I dyed it. <laughs> This was the uh, first bat of the Corydale fleece that I carded with some of my hair in it, apparently. <laughs> and I over dyed it, and I'll try to insert photos of it before. I over dyed it this blue color, and I was thinking I would make something small for my husband. I was thinking either a neck warmer that he could wear uh, snowmobiling or snow shoveling or whatever it may be snow plowing, uh, or mittens. And um, I did actually cast on for mittens, and I'll insert a photo. So I had to rip those out because they were too big. Um, so I ripped it out and reskeined the yarn. And if you notice in that photo, I had the pumpkin uh, stitch marker on there. So, <laughs> uh, so that's that. Okay. <laughs> Um, so crochet, I will mention briefly, I am hosting a, um, crochet along. It's the great granny square crochet along. I made a whole video about it, um, a couple of videos actually, and I showed how I, um, crocheted, started crocheting for the blanket. I made a little sample square for the video, which I actually use as a little like mug rug. <laughs> um, so I have put on five rows since the last time. I'm not going to um, to pick it up and move it because I, I put it in the background for decoration today. But I put on, there's my progress keeper, five rows. And I dyed this green yarn and spun it since last time. And um, then after that, I have the odds and ends bag that I uh, got from, at Rhinebeck from Into the World. and um, I put that in here and then two rows of a yarn that looks new but it's just another yarn that I dyed and I have that right here so we're sort of going to move straight into spinning I think that's going to be how this uh this runs right now because um my crochet blanket is hand spun um so yeah I put this um really dark warm purple it's a plummy to eggplant color. I love this color. I love this color so much. Like I would have a sweater out of this. Um, this was originally um, from the first spinning box that I got. This was some of the first yarn that I ever spun. Um, and it was originally like a BFL natural gray color with some salmon-y to light pink colors and I didn't like it so I over dyed it this purple color which I love so <laughs> um I absolutely love that and if you notice so I dyed this green color specifically to um bring bring out there's green in the center that I wanted to oh I took a photo uh of it laid out on my floor so I'll insert that so you can see. So in the center there, I have um, the, the green color that I used initially. I wanted to kind of bring the green back into the outer edges of the blanket. And I feel like it just kind of brings it together. It, I like Once I put it in, I was like, I knew that it was perfect. And then the purple is the same. So I've kind of got these dark, warm tone purples towards the center and so that purple on the end kind of like just brings it, it makes it kind of cohesive I think I don't know it just seems to like add something <laughs> um, so yeah that's it for my blanket uh, the crochet along is going on all year um, all the rules and information are on are in my Ravelry group and the uh, Great Granny Square uh, chatter thread you can go check that out um, if you're interested in crocheting with us, 
you have still almost an entire year. I mean, it's it's only February right now, so, um, and a lot of people are flying. I mean, including me. I've gotten so far so fast. When I thought to start this, I did not think that I would be nearly finished. Um, I have a few yarns left to use, and I want to add probably a fun border. Um, uh, when I decide that I'm really done, I'm going to think about, like, what color I want to use to the border and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so we're just going to keep on um, sort of talking about spinning since we're already kind of talking about spinning. Um, I did, since the last time... Um, I dyed and spun some yarn. So I'm kind of calling this triple berry. So this has, um, it's, it's a warm toned, uh, purple, which was inspired by this. And, um, it's got sort of mauve or mauve, whatever you prefer, uh, these deep, plummy purples, some kind of red berry colors, and there were like hints of, of uh, blue, but they, they pretty much got mixed in during the spinning process, but um, I really, really like this, and I'm not sure what to do with it. Of course, I could put it into the blanket, um, and I'll f I'm thinking about it. This is Falkland wool, by the way. Um, and I initially dyed this to sell it. <laughs> I dyed eight ounces of um, this Falkland fiber, this color. And I have, I haven't weighed this part, but I have four ounces left. So you can see the colors. So um, I was going to sell this, and um, I decided to, well, spin this first half and see what I thought, but then maybe I would keep this, and I could use it for a weaving project or something. Um, I don't want to sell it because I don't want to sell anything that is, I, don't, I hate to use the word perfect, but um, anything that's less than perfect. And this just wasn't, this is good. I could sell this, but I'm just, I'm being really self, I'm being really critical. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to keep it. So I think I'll use it for a uh, weaving project. And what I might do is, um, spin it differently than I spun this one so that the color, the segments of color either repeat faster or slower. And that might create some really cool looking woven fabric. So <clears throat> that's, um, that's all that I spun, um, since last time. Uh, I've been kind of focused on knitting. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. I forgot, I was going to mention when I was talking about my socks that I said that I was going to do the boxes, box O socks cow that um, Vul and Vine, um, the Yarngasm podcast hosts. Um, but I, I think I've changed my mind. Um, I think I was getting super excited about, um, you know, everybody was talking about doing the box of socks. And I was like, oh, I want to do that too. And how cool would that be? But I'm forgetting that I have other... I think my neighbor is snowmobiling. It's really annoying. I mean, if I wasn't podcasting, I wouldn't care. But I just keep hearing the snowmobile go by and it's distracting. Uh, anyways, I have goals and things like my crafty resolutions. And, um, you know, I want to uh, spin, spin an entire fleece and prep and, and make a hand spun sweater from a, from a sheep to sweater, you know? Those goals, I want to keep like, have a priority of, of my goals and make, you know, certain things that I really want to do a priority. The sun's really bright right now. Um, <laughs> so I think if I did the box of socks, 
that would take away, that would take some of my crafting time and that would take away from other goals that I have. So I think I've, I want to sort of like take back that I said that I was going to do, um, do the box of socks. I want to focus on my own hand spun box of socks and I want to um, make sure that I'm achieving that goal and I also want to make sure that I'm putting time and effort into the other goals that I personally really want to have done. So I don't know. I thought I'd mention that. Um, that uh, sometimes we get caught up in things that other people are doing and we get excited about it and we want to do it too. Um, I don't know if it's FOMO. You know what FOMO is. Uh, fear of missing out. <laughs> but um, or yeah, it's, you just want to like be a part, part of, you know, what, what people are doing. Cause that's, it's fun anyways. But I think it's also important to assess what you really want to do, um, what, what you really want to accomplish and, um, make sure that you stay on track for that. So I just thought I'd mention that. Okay. So on to weaving, I finished my woven fabric. This is, um, the second project I've ever made. And I sewed it into a pillow. So this is the back side. It's an envelope style. I guess it's called an envelope style uh, pillow. So that um, this isn't permanently attached to the pillow. I can take it on or off. Um, <clears throat> I could have put buttons or something to hold this closed. But I really don't care. I actually think it's cute. Um... So this is uh, my second weaving project, my first time weaving plaid. I talked about it and showed it off on the loom. And I have a few photos that I'll insert of um, weaving, of the process of weaving it. Um, so I do have a couple of things that I need to say, but I want to be careful about how I say it because <clears throat> I don't want to offend anyone or upset anyone. Um, I had an issue with uh, some, I had an issue with the, when I went to wash this fabric, the pink bled out really, really badly. And um, I can show you, these are the stick shuttles that I have. This is all that I had left of the blue. I used, I, well, I have plenty of yarn left actually. Um, but I mean on the stick shuttle. And then, so there were four colors that I used, the blue, the pink, the purple, and then this white speckled by Hedgehog Fibers. And if I show you, you can see this line right here. So these, these stripes were that color, where this white was speckled. And after washing the fabric, the pink bled out and stained the white yarn. So <clears throat> if you look at the photos um, of the fabric, you know, before washing and sewing, you'll see that, yeah, it looked different. Um, the pink uh, bleeding out did dye uh, the white, unfortunately. And, um, I don't want to harp on it. It's it's sad that it happened. It happens. Um, Andy dyed yarn. It's always good to check. And in weaving, there is such a thing as swatching. <laughs> I don't know if it's called swatching or, yeah, making a swatch like like knitting. You there's the same thing in weaving, where you weave a sample, and then see if you like the fabric. And everything and if I had done that <laughs> and washed and set it I would have seen that the pink um, would would have bled out and dyed the white and I could have decided what to do about that situation <laughs> so uh, I guess that's a point for uh, for sampling with your weaving but I don't I mean it's not a big deal I was a little sad about it up front you know at first because I really, really liked the way what it looked when it was white, um, but it still looks beautiful. I think it's still beautiful, and I don't think there's much point uh, crying over spilled milk, if you will. 
Uh, it's still beautiful and I've already used it as a, a spinning pillow so I'll put it behind me and um, <laughs> try to like keep better posture. My posture is awful, I know it is. But <laughs> put it behind my back and try and um, try to sit a little bit uh, straighter maybe. <laughs> I could I could use it right now. <laughs> so that's my pillow and oh I guess I'll show you um uh I can take it off and what I was thinking is that um I could make a bunch of these and so I just kind of flipped it flipped it out. Uh this is super easy to sew by the way. If you don't have a ton of sewing experience, this is not hard at all. It's just straight lines. Um I have a serger, so I surged the edges, uh, both of the, where the beginning and the end of the fabric was, I surged um, the fabric and then folded it over uh, and sewed it down. So uh, it's hard to see, but I sewed really close to the I think a quarter of an inch so it hits right where the the surging stops right there um, and then basically you just fold it over so you have you have a <laughs> I have a photo uh, but you fold it over one time and then you fold it over again so the first fold I sewed that um, pinning it so that the edges would line up as best as I could get them um, because this is hand woven, the uh, my my weaving ability um, has a influences my ability to line up line up the edges. So here's the seam. So you can see where I matched the purple, and I tried to get everything to line up as best as possible. Um, but yeah, if my weaving is off, then my ability to sew it together perfectly is going to be off. Um, because, um, like if, if one square was slightly longer than the other, it's harder to get them to match up perfectly. But I think I did pretty good job. Um, so like I said, yeah, you just fold it over and then I sewed, uh, I think three eighths of an inch, um, seam allowance and then folded it over again, making sure that the way I folded it would fit snugly around this is like an 18 by 18 inch pillow form um and then yeah like I said just a bunch of straight lines super easy I didn't you know I don't even need to look up how to do it you just kind of um fold them sew the lines and just make sure that your um you want it to be snug you want it to have like negative ease so that it fits snugly over the pillow. So yeah, it's just like a little envelope. And I did, yeah, I tried my best to match up the, the, the plaid stripes and everything. So yeah, I love it. And uh, I think what I'll do is maybe make some more of these. And this would be a fun, fast, way to decorate for holidays and things. So uh, Valentine's Day is this coming Wednesday. So happy Valentine's Day, guys. Uh, if you celebrate, <laughs> I know some people hate Valentine's Day. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, sometimes we make plans and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we go out and sometimes we stay home. Um, sometimes, yeah, we've made romantic dinners at home in the past and we've gone out and done fun things. I mean, it just, I don't know. It depends, I guess. <laughs> um, so I was thinking that I could weave some more of these like pillow sort of slip kind of things, um, envelopes. I'm just going to call them envelopes, um, and decorate for the holidays. So I could make, I, I don't really decorate for St. Patrick's day, but I guess I could do that. Um, or Easter, or uh, I could do some red, white, and blue ones for um, the 4th of July. And um, and the Olympics is going on. I have like all of these side thoughts. I try not to be this chatty, but it just, I can't, I can't help it. Um, 
<laughs> and then Christmas and, you know, all the holidays. Uh, so <laughs> I think these would be cool and a fun way to decorate. And I could take them off, pop them in the washing machine. Uh, if it's super wash, this is super wash. Um, store it away if it's holiday themed. And uh, have a fun little way to uh, decorate. I don't know. I think they're cool. <laughs> so that's it for my weaving project. This is just a cheap pillow form from Joann's that I bought years ago. <laughs> um, and yeah, I really like it. The pillow form is, uh, is not the best pillow form in the world. It looks a little bit lumpy, but I don't know. It's still cute. Uh, so that's it for weaving. I don't know what I'm going to do next for weaving. Um, I've got to figure it out. Maybe I'll try using my hand spun. Um, I don't know if I'm, yeah, I don't know. Do I do a pattern? Do I do a different weave with colors? I don't know. I, I, I haven't, uh, figured that out yet. And then, so for the last segment of this video, I have, um, crafting from the past. So for the last segment, I have, uh, crafting from the past. And I brought out this book that I've had since, I don't know, high school. Uh, uh, these are called beadlings. And I made, um, in high school, I used to make these little beaded, um, things, mostly from this book. And these are probably my most loved, um, beadlings, if you will. They are little fish. And this one, there we go. Little fish. And I wear these all the time. And I almost always wear these when I go fishing. So if we are going to go fishing, my husband and I love to go fishing. We bass fish. I am the pike whisperer, if you know anything about fish. Um, and, uh, and I bought my husband a fly fishing rod for Christmas so that we can go fly fishing together. I took fly fishing um, at university. So yeah, I wear these when I go fishing all the time. Like if I know that I'm going fishing, I like have to put these on. <laughs> um, I have these, uh, starfish that I made, like I said, in high school, I made those fish in high school, which was, um, over 10 years ago. Um, the, yeah, these are more than 10 years old because I didn't make these when I was a senior. I made them, you know, probably, I don't know, sophomore or something. So I also made these starfish, but I don't really wear the starfish so much. Um, and then I have this little frog, which I've never used for anything. It's a little white and pink frog. But I thought I'd show you in this book. I don't have them anymore because they fell apart. But a long time ago, I made the spider that's in this book. And here you can see. There's a couple different colors and I think maybe mine were black and pink and I, I made them so that I used some of this uh, like clear uh, thread stuff um, to make it look like the spider was hanging down and so I had earrings and then a little segment of like the clear uh, I don't know what it's called it's, it's the stuff that you use to um, to bead with the, it looked, it looked like, you know, the spider was hanging down by its thread. It's not silk. It's spider web. I don't, what do you, how do you say that? Um, so anyways, they hang, they hung down by a little clear, clear segment. And then, um, the earrings were quite big, but I made those in high school and I actually wore them. I thought they were so cool. Um, <laughs> but like I said, they fell apart. Um, <laughs> so yeah, these are my favorite, favorite, favorites. And I was thinking, I've been thinking for a long time, actually, that I should make some, um, some new ones that maybe use some green and try to make them look more like a uh, bass or trout or something. I mean, they're not going to really look like bass, but just you know, like these look more tropical. So yeah, <laughs> these are my favorite and I love these. So that's, 
that's it for crafting from the past today. Um, and I think that's all that I have for you. Oh, what, I guess, yeah, I did. I brought this out for uh, fiber. This is my last uh, Nest Fiber Club. Um, yeah, because I, I canceled the subscription. So this is called Cocoon. It's merino, bamboo, and silk. Um, I canceled it not because I didn't like it, but because I felt like um, I have enough stash right now. So this is the February club color. Really, 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 really beautiful. I love, of course, I love the purple. Kind of a raspberry color in there, too. And then the other colors look exactly like the November. So this orangey, rusty, caramely colors, um, and even this like silvery color look exactly like the November colorway, club colorway. Um, <clears throat> so I think the only difference between this and that one is the purples. So I, maybe I'll put them together because I think I have to pull it back out and double check, but I think they, um, they kind of, they would go together really well, which might have been intentional, I'm going to guess. <laughs> so yeah, that's my last Nest Fiber Club, and uh, I, yeah, that's all I have for, I, I'm going to yeah stop fiber buying for a while. So I showed you guys that, and then this, that's what was not what I was going to show you. And then I dyed this. This is some um, mohair... Uh, Romney Lester cross that I dyed and um, I'm keeping this uh, and it has blue and sort of almost teal um, pinks and purples and uh, even spots of it's hard to see there but um, kind of burgundy colors um, and then the black uh, you can see that there's black. Those, these are two separate braids here. So I've put these together um, to spin, and I think I'm going to make socks with this. So see, you can see that there's two separate. So this might be my next pair of hand-spun socks for my hand-spun box of socks um, that I showed you earlier. Uh, but I'm going to finish knitting my first pair before I start seriously thinking about um, a second pair. So, <laughs> okay, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and um, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye. Hey guys, so I thought I'd let you say hi to Thea. This is Thea and Max. This is my husky Max. And they don't get to make it on the show very much. They're both big dogs. And, um, and they shed a lot. <laughs> I put the this blanket that I quilted down so they could sit up here with me. Yeah, this is Thea. She is a yellow lab. And this is Max. And he is a husky. He's a long-haired husky. And they are both um, my sweet babies. <laughs> Um, Max is going to be 10 years old this year, and Thea is going to be 6 years old this year. So, <laughs> you say hi? Oh. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> I just thought I would, I would let you say hello to the puppies. <laughs> Excuse you. All right, <laughs> see you guys next time. Bye.